Hello again, everyone, and welcome to a short stop with a short stop. Today, let's talk a little bit about the tongue once again. I know when I played Major League Baseball, and sometimes you go out and talk with the umpires after you thought they'd made a bad call and conversation wouldn't be very good. I never cussed one. Never in my life did I ever cuss one, but I have heard a lot of other people <laughs> unfortunately do it. I, I can remember Harry Wendelstadt. He was one of the best umpires I'd ever saw. And Eric Gregg, uh, Joe West. Then you had my favorite, which was Doug Harvey. He, we called him God. He had never missed a call in his life. So. If you ever wanted to argue with him, you might as well not do it because he, he had never made a mistake in his life. Uh, but then you, you get to the college level and, you know, there's some um, umpires that you may not like even in, back into the Little League level. You watch University of Kentucky with baseball or basketball or football. There's always going to be some times when we need to control our tongue uh, and the fans can even get involved. And they can start booing a player. And unfortunately, I was booed at one time, and it don't feel good. <clears throat> but sometimes people just do that out of reactions and different things of that nature. But uh, we need to always be careful how we use our tongue and what we say. Uh, one of the best ways that we can do that is to think before we speak. Because uh, it is what that I'm about to say, is it going to be helpful or is it going to be hurtful? Because uh, our words are one of our superpowers. If we were a Superman or Batman or uh, one of those guys that used to be on the super force, but words are one of our superpowers. Uh, uh, because our words with our family, and our immediate family and our spiritual family, because <clears throat> all, of, all of our relatives are like super uh, human blackboards uh, standing right in front of us. Uh, we're saying, write what you think of me on this blackboard. And these messages should be messages of hope, uh, encouragement, uh, whether intentional or unintentional. Our job is not necessarily to teach someone who is going through possibly a rough time or a rough patch in their life, uh, but we should try to help them through something that may be disappointing for them. And on a rare occasions, we may be even prompted to try to correct them, but most often, <clears throat> We need to tell our loved ones that uh, with spoken words or maybe even unspoken words, the messages that they long to hear. And uh, one of them is that you're going to be loved no matter what. Uh, you are a big part of this family. Sometimes our people just don't hear what they need to hear. and We need to... Uh, make them feel like they are complete, uh, make them feel like they are wanted and needed. Uh, listening sometimes more than lecturing people is what we should do and keep our tongue quiet and let them talk. Because uh, sometimes uh, one who hears and wonders, you know, I sometimes think, how would I feel if I said some of the things that this other person was relating to me? How would I have had to have feel or felt to be able to say those kind of words? Uh, so missteps, maybe sometimes and miscalculations, uh, they're not just probable. Uh, that they are possible and they can sometimes happen with our tongues. It wouldn't be, it would be very, very interesting that at the end of our lives that we could see 
what our relationships are going to be, uh, even though they could be very challenging at moments when we're going some of the most difficult times of our lives trying to talk to other people, it can bring us and make us be more like Jesus Christ each and every time that we go through them if we try to protect our words and show people that we care about them and we have consideration for them and use our tongue and our words the way that God would want us to, the way Jesus Christ would want us to, to the best of our ability. And let our immediate family, but let our church family know also that, hey, you're cared about. You're wanted. You're loved. You're part of the family. Let's all get together and let's get going and, and do what Jesus wants to do. I'm going to leave you with one verse <clears throat> today, and it's just one verse only. It's 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15. And it basically says this, uh, give an answer of hope. If you can do that for somebody today, you're, you've done a good job. Give an answer of hope with our words. Thank you again for being with a shortstop with a shortstop.